The Manitowish Waters Historical Society presents Jack Vilas, the first flying fire ranger. 1915 marks a significant shift in forestry practice. Logan Jack Vilas, on vacation from Chicago, was residing on the south side of Trout Lake at the Manitowish Resort. At this point, he spent weeks flying his hydro aeroplane around Trout Lake and the greater Northwoods region. This resort, importantly, was in close proximity to the state headquarters for Wisconsin forestry. Vilas's enthusiasm for aviation caused him to reach out to the local rangers and offered to take one of them up in his hydro aeroplane. This flight will prove to be the first step in aerial fire surveillance. Some background on Trout Lake Forestry Headquarters and why fire control was so very important. Ian e. Griffith on the left was the visionary state forester who guided Wisconsin's early conservation practices. In only a few years, his efforts gained national attention as a model. State Forester Griffith, riding the horse to the right in Manaqua, surveyed the Northwoods forest to design solutions to tame the raging forest fires that were fueled by cutover slash, drought, and dangerous logging practices. Griffith also was designing his plans for the Wisconsin Forest Reserve. In 1911, Griffith started to implement his scientific forestry model. And his solution was not only to create the Wisconsin Forest Reserve, but also create a network of ranger cabins all around the Trout Lake headquarters, like this cabin at Russ Lake. Windmill fire towers linked by telephone to the Trout Lake headquarters would relay important fire control information. Teams of firefighters with tools and freshly cut fire lanes would bring greater fire control to the north. In the summer of 1915, Griffith was in the last days as state forester when Vilas appeared at Trout Lake. A few days after, an assistant forester flew with Vilas. Griffith jumped on board and he and Vilas made aviation and forestry history. This becomes a media event that is quite popular both nationally and locally. To the right, we have an image of a camera, a movie camera, in the cockpit with Vilas with the islands of Trout Lake in the background. If anybody viewing this video knows of how we could access that film, please share that with the Manitowish Waters Historical Society so we can add it to our archives. Vilas and Griffith certainly do make forestry and aviation history. Images of Vilas's hydro aeroplane skimming across the waters of Trout Lake created an enthusiasm for this story. The American Forestry Association published in its magazine that the use of the flying machine is particularly valuable for this kind of work where the country is flat or where there are no high elevations upon which lookout stations may be placed. Aviator Vilas, at the height of 1,000 feet, can detect a fire 30 or 40 miles away from the lake. Later in the article, E.M. Griffith says, It is generous of Mr. Vilas to offer these services to the state without charge. The other day, I made an ascent with him, and we detected a fire. By communicating with the rangers when we came down, 
we found it was a settler doing some clearing. The hydro aeroplane will reach the place of fire in only a few minutes, where otherwise hours would be consumed. This enthusiasm led to other news reports, certainly from the Wisconsin State Journal, saying Jack Vilas given job as ranger after he shows the chief what he can do, shows how both Griffith and Vilas had to come together to really launch this notion of aerial fire surveillance in forests. It is important to note that Vilas was never paid for his efforts. He was merely a volunteer that was helping out the Department of Forestry. This is an iconic photo on Cathedral Point on Big Trout Lake with Jack Vilas sitting in the rear of his hydro airplane and joined by forest headquarter rangers who proudly want to celebrate the accomplishments of Vilas and Griffith. Unfortunately, Vilas and Griffith's vision of aerial fire detection was quickly dismissed as unreliable by traditionalists in the newly created Wisconsin Conservation Commission. Another contemporary Wisconsin aviator comes to mind, Bill Mitchell, who encountered similar rejection from traditional Army and Navy leadership to build U.S. air power in the 1920s. Mitchell's zealous advocacy of air power will ultimately lead to his court-martial. Vilas, Griffith, and Mitchell will later be recognized as visionary pioneers who had it right from the very beginning. The image to the right is of a DNR plane spotting a fire near Rust Lake in the 1950s. In 2016, the Wisconsin DNR decommissioned all fire towers. And now, Wisconsin only uses aerial surveillance for fire detection within forests. The map on the left illustrates large Wisconsin forest fires, those fires greater than 250 acres. Notice the blue frame that marks Griffith's plans for the forest reserve. It seems that his planning and operation really did prevent forest fires and lead to good forest scientific management. Retired forester Ralph Hewitt calls the Northern Highland American Legion Forest the asbestos forest. Even though they have many fires each year, fire teams ID and suppress fires quickly in cooperation with first responders from local communities. From Vila skimming along Trout Lake to our aerial fire detection today, we celebrate this great Northwood story. Please visit Trout Lake and enjoy the beauty and historic traditions that makes the Northwoods so special.